and broke their transfer record to sign Gilfie Sigurdsson last week. But what are the chances of any more new faces at Goodison Park? Ronald Koeman will tell us. What are the chances of Lionel Messi leaving Barcelona? You'll get an answer from his former manager Pep Guardiola very shortly. And Good morning. We can promise you the final nine days will not be dull. And immediately we will go to PSG. Some serious intent from them once again in this window. We understand they've made an initial loan move for Kylian Mbappe, which includes Lucas Moura moving in the other direction. The proposal is a loan with an agreement to buy next summer. PSG, of course, are mindful of meeting UEFA's financial fair play rules following the world record signing of Neymar. We're told by well-placed sources that Monaco and PSG are far from an agreement at this stage and they may not stop there. Sky and Italy are reporting that PSG are also in talks uh, to sign Fabinho. If that happens, PSG are building quite a formidable side. Just over a week left of this window then, as we mentioned, and we're still no wiser as to where Diego Costa and how the saga plays out. Talks are ongoing uh, for him to move back to Atletico Madrid. As of this morning, a compromise has not yet been reached. Contrary to some reports in Spain, the extraordinary stand off has been described as a drama by those close to the player. Antonio Conte laughed off questions about him last week. Well, let's get immediate reaction. Sean Gota still with us. Uh, Chelsea, can they afford to be missing a striker of the quality of Costas? Well, as long as they perform well and get keep winning games and get three points, then, then yes. But if they were to go two or three games and not win and not score goals, there'll be this, this question mark on why when you've got a player negotiate and sort some deal. He's a quality, he's, you know, he's, he's one of those, you, you love him or loathe him he, type of player he is. But this is, this is, this is unreal, you know. He's dictating to the club that this is the deal that he wants and he wants away and that, um, you know, they, they, they basically now need to make it happen. Uh, I, can't see, I can't see a win for Diego Costa. Um, and so I'm intrigued to see exactly what Chelsea do throughout this period. It's interesting what you said there, just, just very briefly, because I want, I want to ask you about his replacement. But as a player, if you're in that Chelsea squad, whose side would you be on, Diego Costa's or Antonio Conte's? Well, as, as players, you, you, you're going to support, you have support for your fellow teammates, but he's not there, so therefore you, the more support is going to the manager, county. So they brought in Morata, uh, obviously to be their frontline replacement for Diego Costa. He's had spells at two of the biggest clubs in, in, in Italy yes. and in Spain as well, but very rarely has he been the number one choice frontline man. Can he handle that? I think so. This is what he wanted. He wanted away from Real Madrid because he wanted more first-team football. Uh, he, he obviously wanted that occasion where it's a big team, Chelsea are a big team, European team as well. So he, this is the platform for him. Um, he's having to adjust. It's a transition period here because he's having to adjust to Chelsea, the style, um, and, and the players are having to adjust, adjust to him as well. But uh, I see it being a good, a good match. Um, the other striker, whose name Bashik, Bachwai. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, I think he's another, he scored the own goal, but I think once he gets over that, he's, he's a very good striker. And I think between those two can, can do very well, for, or will do very well for Chelsea. But yeah, Morata, I think, just needs to, um, uh, he'll, get a, he'll get himself a few goals and, and the players will adjust to his style and, and, and he'll lead the, the line very well. OK, uh, let's go from attacking options to the case for the defence and a defender who's been very much in demand. Here's Paul. Yes, Rob, we're told Virgil van Dijk trained with Southampton under 18 yesterday. He wants to leave the club, as we know. He handed in a transfer request and strongly criticised the club's management. Southampton have been uh, adamant on this. They say he's not for sale. We await confirmation that centre-back Wesley Hoyt will be joining Southampton. That's what Lazio's sporting director said on Sunday and whether that has any impact on any potential van Dijk departure. Whose side are you on on this one? Uh, do, do you praise Southampton for staying strong or if a player wants to leave, should he be allowed to leave? He's handed in a transfer request. Well, I'm Southampton because, as a club because 
Tottenham and Van Dijk is just, and then, then all the clubs will be, oh, well, we've, we've got to sell them. So I, I think Southampton's in the right to let this just simmer down, let him calm down a little bit, train a little bit with the reserves and realize that you can be here for another six months, you could be here for another, you know, another year. Uh, but you're a Southampton player and you're going to be playing for Southampton. How does it feel as a player though? Because in, in, to play devil's advocate here, yesterday Southampton said, Geordie Classy, we don't need you anymore. Or those were the reports, you can go. So as a player, you can be told, right, you're out the door. Whereas a player can't go, I want to go out the door. Yes, it's, I think slightly different because Van Dijk, again, has got a number of years on his contract. So that's, that for me is the, the you know, he was happy with that. Uh, a player that's been told to, to move on perhaps has a wind of that, has a sense of that because they're not playing as regular and you sense that over the, over the past season. Uh, it isn't something where you're playing regular one season and then the next season you're just automatically dropped. So I, I think that player would have sensed that, would have known and would have seen it coming. So therefore his, his agent would be probably in the background working saying, trying to sort out some sort of a deal, which is a whole different scenario. Mm. OK, uh, let's get more on that top box uh, up there. Uh, will Zlatan return? Question mark. Here's Paul. Yeah, Manchester United are doing OK without him. Two 4-0 wins, uh, but uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is closing in on a return to Old Trafford. Negotiations are ongoing uh, for Ibrahimovic to extend his stay at the club. We're told there's not yet an agreement in place. And Jose Mourinho says they are discussing the possibility of him staying on. OK, what about that one? Um, negotiations are ongoing. Would you like to see him return to the Premier League and to Manchester United? Oh, yes. I mean, he's, he's an exciting player. I mean, he, he brings an aura about him, even when he isn't playing some of the one-line statements. Uh, but he also backs it when he plays. And I, I think it's a shrewd signing because I was initially just sort of thinking, you know, if um, Lukaku is injured, then, then what real physical presence do United have? Um, and I think that, yeah, that, you know, having Slatten will be a, a really good option for them uh, in playing games in Europe and so on and so forth. So, uh, and, and, and he delivers. He's, he's a quality player and he delivers. So is he there as a backup to Lukaku or can the two play in the same team? I think, <clears throat> I think he'll be more, more for a backup. Um, and I think there'll be games they could play together. I mean, at the end of the day, they're quality players. Lukaku possesses the, the, the pace that, will, that you require when you play with Slatin. Because Slatin, everyone knows it's, it's going to be the feet, it's going to be in front of you. And Lukaku possesses that, that down the side pace to stretch teams. Uh, so, uh, yes, at times I think they could play together. But I initially think it'd be a one-for-one -one competing situation. Exciting times if you happen to be a Manchester United time. Frightening times if you happen to be a, on the opposition. <laughs> now, the future of Philippe Coutinho has been the subject of plenty of debate this summer. A deadline set by Barcelona to accept their latest bid of £118 million passed on Sunday night. Liverpool are adamant the forward is not for sale. Jamie Carragher thinks he won't be sold. However, speaking on Monday Night Football, Carragher believes it could have been a very different story had things gone another way earlier this summer. I think there's any doubt now, I think... I, to be honest, I was thinking about... I, I said a, a few weeks ago that they can't sell them, they can't do that. The, the problem is, they become more about political rather than the actual business of it, I think, in terms of... Liverpool have had such a poor window, they couldn't be seen to letting go of them. Now, if Liverpool's three big targets of uh, Van Dijk, Keita and Salah, if they'd have got them in the door, I'm not saying, yes, sell them, but it may have been easier to prize them away. And even Liverpool supporters may have thought, 120 million for Philip Coutinho. And then you could still go and spend that with two or three weeks of the window to go. But they were never going to sell him uh, on the fact that he hadn't brought enough players in. Standoff or brinkmanship? What is this? Where do the two clubs go now? Well, I think Liverpool have, you know, said it pretty clear. <laughs> What's coming out from Liverpool is that they're not wanting to sell him. Um, you know, in Barcelona, I think all the eggs are in that basket. They, they won't continue. And I, I, I personally think that um, Liverpool, I think Liverpool will be short. I, I think they'll be short to win the Premier League. Um, and, and for me, I think they can do, it could be good business as to what they can do with that uh, after Coutinho has moved on, if they, if they accept it. Yeah, if he doesn't move on, is it important that Jurgen Klopp assesses how he'll react and his teammates react to the non-sale? 
because it it could leave a bad taste, couldn't it? Yes, and that and that could probably knock Coutinho a month or two. And and if you have a key player that's not quite at it for a month or two, you know, for Liverpool that could be nine to twelve points that Coutinho could have contributed to. And Liverpool can't afford nine or twelve points. Um, they, they just can't afford to, to lose 9 or 12. Thomas transfer window, but has he finished? Find out next. Blog for all the latest deals, that's on our website and digital devices. Now to Arsenal, and they continue to try and sell players. We can expect more departures in the next nine days. Will Jack Wilshere be one of them, or can he still have a future at the Emirates? At this stage, we're not aware of any formal offers for the England international. He was sent off for their under-23s last night after reacting to a late tackle from Manchester City player Matthew Smith. A more concrete move should see John Torrell leave for Hull City. We understand a deal is close, and the medical is today. Interesting. Jack Wilshere, there is no denying his ability, but he's, he's been cursed by these injuries. That red card most probably born out of frustration last night, wasn't it, really? What does the future hold for him? Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of unknown because, again, the, the ability that he has, he possesses, he, and he gets, he gets caught up in all this, and there's probably frustration from himself that... You know, the season's kicked off and, and, and he's, he's having to be recuperating and coming from an injury. Um, the, the, what the future holds, and I, and I think that's the same with Wiltshire. He puts himself in these positions of launching for balls, of dribbling, driving forward. It's gone a little too far. And then he, he, he you know, trying to recoup that ball or keep that ball, he's, he's, he's launched and therefore an injury comes and then he's out for a number of weeks and then he's having to get himself going again. But in terms of ability, I mean, he's, he's, he's a top quality player, mm. possesses, you know, the, the qualities you want in, in a modern day footballer, dribbling, yes, can, can produce more goals, but in terms of driving and asking, asking questions of midfield and, and spreading balls, moving it left to right, it, it's quality. But it begs the question, if, and it is still a big if, if Arsenal were to let him go, where does he go? He had the loan spell at Bournemouth. Would any of the top five be interested in, in, in England? Or would he have to go abroad to find the level that he should be playing at? Probably abroad because he's, he's, he's been at Arsenal and I think that when they see his CV come through, I think they'll just see the injuries. Um, and they'll look and they'll know the quality of player he is, but they think, well, he's, he's just had patches of being out, being out, being out. And I think uh, what will probably be good for him is perhaps going overseas and, and knuckling down for a couple of, a couple of seasons uh, at, a, at a top club. Um, and, and because, he, again, he's, he's still a young player, so he can, he can still, you know, resurrect sort of the career, if you like, go away, perform well uh, for a few seasons and then find himself back in the Premiership. But he's, some of it is self-inflicted with the injuries. OK, uh, let's get more, shall we? Here's Paul. Yeah, across uh, North London, it appears Kevin Vimmer is on his way out of uh, Tottenham following the arrival of uh, Davison Sanchez. Sanchez, of course, subject uh, to a medical and, uh, and, and a work permit as well. We understand West Brom bosses have sanctioned the purchase uh, for a fee of £15 million pounds of Vimmer uh, to West Brom. Tony Pulis will now decide if he wants to push ahead with that deal. We understand Stoke manager Mark Hughes is still keen on Vimmer. Another source tells us Crystal Palace have now expressed their interest in the centre half. Now, if Wimmer uh, does go to West Brom, the club will still fight uh, to keep Johnny Evans. Could this be a pivotal week, one way or the other, uh, for this potential transfer? Evans has been the subject of an £18 million bid from Manchester City, a bid that was rejected by West Brom. Tony Pulis said last week that he couldn't guarantee keeping his captain if an enormous offer is made. City are reportedly looking at alternative options should they fail to reach an agreement with the Midlands club before next Thursday's deadline. Now, Lionel Messi's buyout clause may be a staggering £275 million, but according to his former manager Pep Guardiola, someone could pay it. Asked whether Messi's buyout clause could be activated following Neymar's £198 million move to Paris Saint-Germain, here's what Pep had to say. 
I don't know, someone might have, if they have the money, they want to spend it, might happen, who knows? Love, nothing better in football than putting two and two together and, and getting five. Uh, Lionel Messi, if, of all the English Premier League clubs who could afford him, Manchester City most probably would be the only one. Pep Guardiola, his former manager, there's a thought. Yes, it is, but I, I don't get excited because when Pep was at Barcelona, you just heard little bits that one of the reasons he left was because he knew he couldn't get Messi to continue doing what he was doing. Messi was doing it, as in the, the high press and winning the ball back and all of that, but um, was he able to con have Messi continue doing that? Again, how true was that? I don't know. Um, so, believe me, I would love for Messi to come to, to <laughs> Man City, uh, but uh, again, I think it's yeah, two and two and, and getting five. What about Johnny Evans? I think that'll be a good bit of business. I think he's, uh, he's an experienced player. I think he's good on the ball. Um, and, you know, he's, he's, he's won things. So for me, the one thing I can see that Pep has learned from last season is he, looks, he likes to play the three at the back. And that's moving perhaps Fernandinho or Yaya being in that three. He's now looked at playing a defender, i.e. he's got stones there. Um, but I think where the problem ends up being is Stones is, is still uh, learning and improving. And I think uh, A. Johnny Evans is an experienced player that is also a good defender that can come, in, come into that foiled and, and, and be competition. Would that be it for City or would you still like to see more? For me, um, for me, I always, I always thought even, even back last season, I thought that we, we, we don't perhaps have a plan B and that's a, a big center forward. Uh, to be able to, again, in, in a game and say, okay, the last 10, 15 minutes, um, all when teams like Liverpool come in high press and other teams that we can know we can go into this player uh, and play off of. Um, Aguero is top quality, but again, we know we can't just throw the long ball into him. So we don't have that plan B. City have been big spenders, but they're not the only ones this window. Here's Paul. That's right, Rob. Have a look uh, at just what Everton have brought in uh, this summer so far, and it appears they're not finished. Uh, Ronald Koeman has been speaking about potential new signings. This is what he had to say after the draw with Manchester City last night. Finally, is the spending done now? I hope not. <laughs> what else do you need? Now, OK, we, we are looking for uh, a left-footed uh, centre defender, maybe the backup for, for Leighton. Uh, with the injury of Funes Mori, we don't have uh, any left-footed uh, on that side behind uh, as a backup of Leighton. That's an option and also a striker, because I think uh, even with the, the talent uh, of, of, of Dominic and Ramirez, uh, look to other squads, they have that number of players that if we need to make the next step, if we like to make the next step, we need a striker in as well. He's enjoying himself this window. Swansea have had a bit accepted by Hull for midfielder Sam Klukas. Uh, we understand it's £15 million up front and could rise to £16.5 million. Klukas was left out of Hull's defeat at Queen's Park Rangers last Saturday. His move will be worth more than three quarters of a million pounds to League Two side Chesterfield, who sold him to Hull in 2015. Swansea left-back Stephen Kingsley is going the other way to Hull. Now, Newcastle are closely monitoring Sampdoria midfielder Dennis Pryat after sending scouts to watch him in action. However, Rafa Benitez is understood to be under pressure to sell a number of players before investing in new recruits. ...has represented Portugal at under-21 level. Let's bring you these pictures uh, into us this morning, and that's a wonderful uh, shot of Luke Shaw. Good to see him back in action. He's played 59 minutes for United's reserves last night against Swansea. He's recovering from ligament damage in his foot, and uh, the injuries he has been through for such a young man. Good to see him uh, out and training. Same could be said for Ashley Young as well. He played 59 minutes against Swansea last night as well. He's not played uh, all season due to a hamstring problem, but looks to be stretching quite well out there this morning. And plenty for these two to debate. 
not a bad start to the season for him, is it? Look, you can see Matic in the background as well. Uh, Lukaku and Jose Mourinho in co close consultation uh, out there on the uh, training ground. Do you think Manchester United still have stuff to be done? Well, I think all managers all say, you know, they'd like another additional player. So there's probably a player out there they still want, I'm sure. Uh, you, you, can, you can never satisfy Jose Mourinho. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to be satisfied because our time has come to the end. And Sean, lovely to see you. Pleasure uh, as always, Rob. As always. Uh, right, don't forget you can find out all about the latest deals in the Premier League and beyond in our dedicated transfer centre. Next show at 3 o'clock right here on Sky Sports News and at 